yourself. Now we're talking about a way of deliberately activating your stress system in order to combat infection. I do this from time to time. I might feel a tickle in my throat or like I'm getting kind of run down. I will do this kind of breathing. I do. I will take 25 or 30 breaths, exhale, hold my, hold my breath. 25, 30 breaths again, exhale, hold my breath for about 15 seconds. 25, 30 breaths again, exhale, hold my breath for 25 or 30 seconds, then a big inhale and I hold my breath until I feel the impulse to breathe. Again, I feel it's safe for me. I've run it by my doctor, so it's fine. I'm, you should not do this unless it's right for you, but I do this. Some people like the ice bath. I rarely do the ice bath. Some people like cold showers. I like hot showers. So I take hot showers, but I do this kind of breathing. Again, they are all having more or less the same effect of increasing adrenaline, and co- which allows you to combat the infection because you're activating the immune response. Okay. So now let's talk about medium-term stress. Medium-term stress is going to be stress that lasts anywhere from several days to several weeks. Okay, We might think of that as long-term stress. There are times in life when we are just dealing with a lot. Okay, This particular quarter, I happen to be directing a course. I'm doing the lab. I'm doing this. I enjoy all these things immensely, but I'm kind of near my threshold. I'm, at, I'm near the point where any additional thing, like I couldn't log on to a website the other day and it felt like the most intense thing in the world at that moment and I kind of laughed at myself. Fortunately, I caught it. But that typically wouldn't be my response under conditions where I wasn't pushed to threshold. What is this medium-term stress? What is stress threshold? Well, stress threshold is actually our ability to cognitively regulate what's going on in our body. So we've all hear so much about, we need to unify our mind and body. We need to be at one with our mind and body. Or, you know, now I realize I'm kind of poking fun at some of the new agey language, but the reason I poke fun is not because I don't think it has value, but it has no specificity. What does that mean? I mean, I think I'm always in the, my body. I've never fortunately looked across the room and seen my arm over there or my leg over there. I'm connected to my body. There actually is a syndrome where people feel disconnected from their limbs. This is a real clinical condition. These people actually will seek out amputation. They will try and convince doctors to amputate certain portions of their body. It's a really terrible thing for people to have. Um, And it relates to a, a change in central maps in the brain, believe it or not. Most of us want to keep our limbs. Um, whichever ones we happen to have. And most of us feel one in mind and body, so much so that when stress hits, we feel it in our mind and body. A lot of stress inoculation, a lot of managing medium-term stress on the on the time scale of weeks or maybe even a couple months. So we're not talking about years of stress. A lot of that has to do with raising our stress threshold. It's about capacity. And there are very simple tools excellent tools that will allow us to modulate our capacity for stress. And they look a lot like the tools I just described. They involve placing oneself deliberately into a situation where our adrenaline is increased somewhat, not to the extreme. And then when we feel flooded with adrenaline and normally we would panic, it's about cognitively, mentally, emotionally, calming ourselves and being comfortable with that response in our body. So unlike trying to unify the mind and body and make it all calm or make it all alert, this is about dissociating mind and body in a healthy way. And what would this look like? Well, this is something I actually do as a practice because I mentioned before, you can use physiological size in real time. You can use the cyclic hyperoxygenation breathing to combat infection if you're feeling kind of run down. And There is also a way in which you can use things like cold showers, or if you exercise and you bring your heart rate up very high, you kind of go into that high intensity realm where your heart is beating a little bit harder than you're comfortable with. And that you're, or you're just, you feel, uh, some people think it's lactic acid. No one can agree on this, whether what the burn is, whether it's lactic acid or it's buildup of hydrogen or whatever. I don't want to get into that, but we're all familiar with the intense feeling of, of your muscles kind of burning because you're, you're working very hard physically the key in those moments is to learn to relax the mind while the body is very activated and what that tends to do there's a limited amount of research on this but what that tends to do is it tends to create a situation where what once felt like a lot feels manageable okay you've raised your stress threshold or your stress capacity one way that you can do this and this is kind of fun if it's approved by your 
physician and you're able to do this, you can bring your heart rate up. You could do this. And there is also a way in which you can use things like cold showers, or if you exercise and you bring your heart rate up very high, you kind of go into that high intensity realm where your heart is beating a little bit harder than you're comfortable with. And that you're, or you're just, you feel, uh, some people think it's lactic acid. No one can agree on this, whether, what the burn is, whether it's lactic acid or it's buildup of hydrogen or whatever. I don't want to get into that, but we're all familiar with the intense feeling of, of your muscles kind of burning because you're, you're working very hard physically. The key in those moments is to learn to relax the mind while the body is very activated. And what that tends to do, there's a limited amount of research on this, but what that tends to do is it tends to create a situation where what once felt like a lot feels manageable, okay? You've raised your stress threshold or your stress capacity. One way that you can do this, and this is kind of fun, if it's approved by your physician and you're able to do this, you can bring your heart rate up. You could do this through an ice bath if that's your thing or a cold shower or cyclic oxygenation breathing, or you could sprint or you could go hard on the bike, whatever it is that brings your heart rate up. And then what you want to do is you want to actually try and calm the mind while your body is in this heightened state of activation. And the best way that I'm aware to do that, again, goes back to physiology, not psychology. When we are stressed, our pupils dilate the effect of that pupil dilation is to create tunnel vision. It literally narrows our view of the visual world. We no longer see in panorama. And there's some other effects as well, but that's because the visual system through this cranial nerve system that I described before is tethered and is part of this autonomic nervous system. By deliberately dilating your gaze, meaning not moving your head and eyes around, but by deliberately going from tunnel vision to broader panoramic vision, literally seeing more of your environment all at once. You don't have to do what I'm doing, which is not blinking, you're welcome to blink. But it means di deliberately dilating your gaze so that you can see yourself in the environment you're in. It creates a calming effect on the mind because it releases a particular circuit in the brainstem that's associated with alertness, aka stress. Now, this is very powerful. If you're running, for instance, and you're at max capacity or close to it, where you're kind of hitting like 80, 90% of maximum on the bike and you dilate your gaze, what you'll find is the mind can relax while the body is in full output. And it, this is, um, relates to work that in various communities, people are, are working with this in the sports community, military communities, et cetera. But it's a form, not really of stress inoculation. It's more about raising stress threshold so that the body is going to continue to be in a high alertness, high reactivity mode high output, but the mind is calm. And so this isn't about unifying mind and body. This is actually about using body to bring up your level of activation, then dissociating, not the clinical dissociation kind of disorders, but dissociating the mental or emotional response from what's going on in your body. And over time, so if you do this, you know, a couple times, you don't have to do this every workout, but if you do this every, maybe once a week or so, you start being comfortable at these higher activation states. What once felt overwhelming and like a lot of work now is manageable. It feels tolerable. So that's for navigating medium term stress. Now there are other tools as well. So I don't want to go into every little bit of this and I want to make sure we get to emotions, but I want to emphasize that these medium term stressors of, oh, it's been a hard month or hard week or you know, uh, Stanford's on the quarter system, so 10 weeks or semester, that is becomes more manageable when we train ourselves to be calm of mind when our body is activated. And if you haven't noticed, most of the tools I'm describing today are nothing like the sort of, okay, sit and do meditation. I'm not, I'm actively avoiding saying the words NSDR, non-sleep deep rest. I talked a lot about those tools during the months on sleep and neuroplasticity. And of course, they are wonderful for replenishing your ability to lean into effort, to learn, to focus. Please do try and check out NSDR protocol, see if they're right for you. The margins for safety, I think are enormous. You're basically just listening to a script. We have links to them in previous captions. I've talked on them on various podcasts before. We can provide them again. But today I'm really talking about tools so that you can learn to dance with stress to, in the short term, reduce that stress response a little bit if he feels too uncomfortable. In the medium term, to be comfortable at these heightened levels of activation because life is gonna continue to come at you. We can't pick the stressors.